today we're going to test out Colour Crafts Brusho Crystal Colour Watercolour Powder. Let's get started. Hello guys. So we're going to be testing out the Brusho Crystal Colour Powders. I'm really, really excited, but at the same time, I'm scared because these things are very, very messy and I know for a fact that these stained my hands for a good three days at the very least. I don't want my my hands to be stained. Okay. This is actually the brochure that comes with it. And these are actually made in the UK, which is actually really, really cool because if you know anything about me, I am British. So now that I have actually figured out what colours I have and what colours I don't have out of this list, I will say that there is a huge, huge flaw. Now, obviously, there's some colours that I wish I had that I don't have. They look really pretty, these colours. But the one colour I should have in this set that I don't is a yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is an incredibly important thing to have. Now I actually might have this colour already. Now as you can see that this colour is golden yellow and this one is yellow ochre. There's this one colour that's called yellow and I have no idea whether it's yellow ochre or golden yellow. I'd rather it be yellow ochre because yellow ochre is incredibly more fundamental for mixing. So if this is golden yellow, I don't mind it, but I'd rather it be yellow ochre. The thing that really mystifies me is the fact that there is actually no just yellow. It's either golden yellow or yellow ochre. So it could be either or. But the one thing I want to do first is actually swatch all of them. I just want to clarify why they have the push pins in the top of the lids. Now it actually states in the leaflet that they can be turned into a shaker pot or like a pepper pot kind of thing where you can just shake out the powder and create like a very scattered effect. So that's why some of them have it and some of them don't because I haven't finished actually poking holes in the tops of the lids. So yeah, there's that. So how are we going to do this? Oh no. Let we're going to have to get messy. We're going to have to get messy as hell. I'm just going to use a bold mirror size 6 brush just to get these swatches down. And I'm going to be using this Arteza paper left over from a previous project to do the swatches on. Let's get to the swatching. When it came time to swatching this, I actually decided to swatch one day and then do the rest of it another because once I was finished swatching, my hands got really, really dirty and you'll be able to see towards the end of the swatching clip that I actually am like, why? Why? My hands are so dirty because of swatches. But the colours, when they laid down, they were incredibly vivid and really, really pretty. However, they were a little bit hard to swatch because I didn't know exactly how I was going to swatch them because they're powder. Do I put the powder in a palette first or do I just put it straight down on the paper and I just found it quicker to put it straight down on the paper however this did lead to some contamination in some colors I suppose that is something to mention about these it is very easy to cross contaminate the powders especially when the powders are the same color when they're dry but they're not the same color when they're wet and my little water dropper bottle, oh my god, it was so helpful and so great throughout this process. I just thought I'd mention that. So now that I'm done with swatching and you can see that it's still a bit wet, but you can see just by swatching that my hands have become a complete mess. And you can tell that I'm not wearing my jumper anymore because of this mess. It's a lot, okay? <laughs> I will say that this red, when I put it down, I was like, is that blood? Oh, oh no. And this black is like really, really dark. 
The one colour that really stands out as being unique, like the unique ones, is definitely this turquoise, this crimson kind of colour. Prussian blue, I've always had a fondness for the colour Prussian blue, so yeah, but I really like the colour range, it's very very pretty and this is basically mixed with the least amount of water that I can physically do. So this is like the darkest opacity of all these colours. It's almost like a pumpkin or butternut squash kind of orange and it's really really pretty. Basically all these colours, I really like it, it's very very nice. And as you can see at the side, I actually kept uh, all the powder to one side. So now let's get into the techniques that you can use with the brush powders. And hopefully this stuff will now come off my hands. Hopefully. I'm not holding much hope to be honest. <laughs> because have you seen just how pigmented these colours are? So I have quickly flipped through this leaflet and for the most part, it's pretty simple to get the gist of it. Now, there are six main techniques as shown here. The techniques that I would most likely use are the top three. So before we get into doing illustrations, I wanna actually do patch tests of all of these techniques before I actually do them on a final piece of artwork because we all need to learn the basics before doing something final. So this is just my watercolour paper left over from my Arteza review and I use it a lot especially for experimentation. It's really really good paper, it's very thick. My camera does not like to focus when there's nothing on the paper, so I do apologise if it goes in and out of focus while nothing is on the paper. So something else I needed for this technique are these little spray bottles. These were also in my Christmas haul as well, so you can see those. <laughs> they create a very fine mist. I also have this type of spray bottle as well. This was just from a travel set and is really, really cheap. So I'm just sprinkling some of this stuff. I'm taking very, very small amounts. Now there is a little bit of water on this paper already and you can kind of see it start to spread, but the magic will come when we spray it again. You see that? It's it's spreading. So something that I've noticed about this spray bottle is it's very hard to get the direction that you're actually spraying. So I'm going to try it with this one which is my spray bottle that I've been using for years. So hopefully I shouldn't have a harder time with this bottle. I'm just going to open the cobalt blue. As you can see it's quite a full pot so hopefully it's not too bad. So just using my silicone pusher again I'm just using this just to uh, sprinkle a little bit over the top. I think it's actually easier to just sprinkle it with my fingers however Trying to sprinkle it with your fingers is like really really messy so don't get your hands messy. <laughs> oh my god. Okay so let's actually spritz this and you can see that you can create water marbling effects. Now it's obviously easier if you have more water available for you but you can see that it spreads a lot very quickly a little goes a long way so something that I actually find about these that just instantly stands out to me is the fact that it actually works better if it's already on the paper before you spray it and let me just clean this up because it's a mess okay but look at that vivid colour, like that is, that is beautiful, I love that. And this silicone pusher literally just has uh, some remnants of the colour left over and it's just creating this explosion 
of color which is beautiful I'm just I'm just using this silicone pressure just to like just to paint obviously it's no brush and it's not very smooth but it does create a really really nice effect that I'm just experimenting with I'm just having fun oh I've peeled up the paper well So the easiest way to pick up this powder and actually spread it around is to actually use a very dry brush. Don't get it wet because it will stick to the brush. You can see just by that one drop of from the paintbrush that it's created this amazing firework kind of flowery effect which looks really really cool. So I've got a new piece of paper as you can kind of see, my hands have already mucked it up a little bit, but there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> see, your hands will just get very, very messy and it's very easy just to contaminate some of the colors. So I've dusted off some of the yellow and now I'm just going to add some of that crimson everywhere. I'm just tapping off some of the excess just so there's not too much I hope it works because I'm very curious about it. So let's kind of see how this would work. So this is like magic. So that is beautiful. I love that. Now let's actually put some more color on top of it just to experiment with it to see how far we can go. Now I am going to get out the purple. You can see that the purple is actually mixing very, very well. Just look at those colors. Look at that texture. It looks really, really cool. Oh my God. I'm excited for the final pieces, however I'm also very very nervous because this could go awfully but it could also go very well at the same time. So this medium is incredibly hit or miss, it's very, it's very interesting to work with because it's very different, it's definitely something that you would have to get used to as an artist. and. It's definitely not something that you could uh, learn to use overnight. So this is me scattering green. And it's getting everywhere, by the way. Because usually when creating this effect, I would only be able to create this effect digitally. And the fact that I can create it traditionally is really cool. But it's a lot of mess. So something else I am going to try as well is the pepper pot technique or like the salt pepper pot kind of technique. I don't think it will be completely mess free but still it will create more of a mess free of my fingers which if it's mess free to an extent I will welcome with these. So let's spray it. So they're very much reacting to what direction that I spray in as well. You can kind of see that I did get a little bit of green mixed in because colour contamination. But you don't know that you've done colour contamination until you actually put the colour down. So I've just sprinkled it on top of the water puddle. So I'm actually gonna try it again on another piece of paper, hopefully with some different colors just to test it out. But, oh my God, it looks very, very pretty. <laughs> Spraying the paper first will create a puddle on the page. Hopefully you can be able to see the effect. So let's start with the lighter color, the leaf green. This is supposed to be leaf green and it's not reacting leaf green like. So let's try this again, shall we? So I've just sprinkled a lot 
of the turquoise powder and you can kind of see that the turquoise powder is reacting to the fact that I am now putting on leaf green. So this is leaf green and turquoise and because you can see that leaf green has undertones of yellow, you can see those undertones of yellow come out in the powder. But look at this effect. It looks so good. And I didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> it did it on its own. That's awesome. So I'm gonna do a couple more experiments with this technique, see what results I can get. And I might just cut those out and show you guys at the end, but you can see how this technique would be super, super cool to use for a piece of artwork, especially with those water effects. I just decided to speed up the footage instead because at first I didn't really get the hang of how these powders would work. So once I got the hang of it, it actually became easier to create experimental pieces. And this sped up clip kind of demonstrates just how much easier I found it after a couple of tries. You can tell I was having a lot of fun because I was also kind of dabbing bits of colours away and adding more and I just got really really carried away and really into it. I think sometimes when you're working with traditional art supplies it's gonna be messy, you're just gonna have to deal with it and I was having so much fun. I don't know if you can tell in the clips but I personally can. Something that I didn't really mention at the start is I actually have a heat tool and I was using it throughout this video. You can see it multiple times. Just come in and out of frame, just drying these big puddles of water down and it just sped up my entire process. If you don't want to invest in a heat tool, I would recommend just using your hairdryer because it works the same way. Now we're on to a somewhat final piece. I say that very lightly because kind of like the Clip Studio Paint auto color or auto fill kind of thing that they've got on the digital side of things, I wouldn't call the brush -o powders as like the final thing you use. They definitely are great to color in a big area at once. I'd say the only downside is the drying time, but that can actually be alleviated by a heat tool, as I said before. It is very much an art supply that relies on the philosophy of like happy accidents. Something will happen accidentally that you don't intend to, but it does look good in the end anyway. If I had to compare these watercolour powders to any supply that I've used before, I would say they're kind of like my old favourite watercolour palette the Koinor Annie Linky Brilliant Watercolours. Now obviously these are a less travel friendly version, especially with them being powders, but they stain almost the same way. And that blue colour that I said I really liked, yeah, it's uh, very, very similar to one of the colours in that palette. Something that I did with this final piece, I masked off areas, so I knew I was gonna work with the dark colors first and then try to go lighter. But obviously when you're working with staining supplies, you should really work in the opposite way. But masking off the area actually really helped me create more of that contrast. And I really tried to place certain colors lightly or more intensely where I needed the lights and darks. You can't really see the powders on the page until you spray the water. It is a difficult one to explain, but it does look like magic when you spray the water down. This picture was just inspired by some Pinterest pins of mine. I was inspired to do this location for the new OC created in Instagram Designs My OCs, episode two. I also thought it would work well with the brush powders because there were big areas to fill and that I could actually just spray and let the water effects take hold. Of the piece organically. It's been a few days since I filmed the actual messy portions of this video and the reason why I left it so long is because the watercolour paper got quite soaked through with the amount of water I had to spray and also this room became incredibly messy very quickly so I had to clear it up I also wanted to do this last part of the video so that I could actually see just how well this works. Because I noticed even with the swatches that 
some of them became quite cloudy. Now obviously you have some of the brighter colours that didn't dull down very much but like a lot of the colours actually dulled down a lot more than I was expecting. And this is all the colours not mixed together as well. I have a lot of the experiments and you can kind of see areas where they ended up drying very cloudy whereas when they were wet it was less cloudy, the colours were more vivid. If I was to use the technique where I scan these in and use them as textures for my digital work it would definitely be a case of upping the contrast of these just to get rid of that blurriness. I actually think the mixing of colours actually contributed to it going really really cloudy and this is definitely something that I'll bring up when I show you some of the swatches of when I was doing mixing colours. But yeah, you can see parts where it's like, it's really, really cool, but you can also see parts where it just completely clouded over and ruined everything. I also think it's definitely an art of trying to get the right ratio of water and powder. You can very easily go overboard on water and the powder at the same time and just end up with a huge mess on your hands. So here are actually the mixing swatches. This isn't a mi mixing swatch, but these are when I was trying to make a skin tone and I'll actually show you the skin tone in use in a minute. But this one was definitely the closest I could get to my character's skin tone. The one thing I noticed straight away is that it's very cloudy and I don't know whether this is... Then I tried out doing a final piece on my De La Rowney cold press paper and oof. I mean, the video's contrast. I will show you the difference between uh, my raw footage and the contrast filter I usually put over all my footage just to make it look a bit better for you guys. But ooh. <laughs> This one did not do very well, especially in the darker colours. The lighter colours aren't too bad, but the darker you get with your colours. When trying to do a final piece with all of the brush -o and nothing else, it just becomes really, really cloudy in the dark areas. And last but not least, there's this piece. Now, as you can see, uh, it was going well with the water and I didn't mind it but uh, then I started removing the masking fluid and you can see where that just that just went completely wrong for me areas flooded where it wasn't supposed to I'm not sure whether this is the papers fault or whether it's the fault of me or the brush -o, but Oof, this looks awful and I felt so bad about it that I was just like, mm -mm, I'm not fixing this. I, I have the sketch, so if I want to do it again in the future, I will. This piece just didn't turn out great. My overall opinion of these Brusho watercolour powders is that they're not necessarily a bad art supply. It's just that I feel their use is definitely more sparingly than intensive and they're definitely not what I expected but I'm okay with that. It was a fun experience but I will say clearing up the mess wasn't so fun. <laughs> but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did you can like and subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell for notifications for every time I upload or live stream on this channel. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!